Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer on Wednesday the 22nd of March um, and it's uh, the fifth um, week of Lent and I hope you're keeping well. I'm uh, filming this morning from uh, the barn at Bonnell Ridge and I'm just sitting here among the little lambies and, uh, and recording today and behind me is, uh, is, she? is, is Rosie the lamb and uh, with, with her little little clutch there she has two little twins um, she's sitting behind me oh, yeah. but there's some others in here as well um, uh, this morning our service is taken from the Anglican prayer book and uh, please feel free to join us as you know it Lord open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise O God make speed to save us O Lord make haste to help us Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. We say the Venate together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he has made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 128. And it's entitled, A Psalm of Ascent. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus shall a man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading for this morning is taken from Romans chapter 10 and reading from verse 10, verse 14 to verse 21. But how are they to call on one whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe if one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all have obeyed the good news, for Isaiah says, said, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes from the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out over all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses said, I will make you jealous for those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But if Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this morning is taken from John chapter 10 and reading from verse 1 to 18. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes out ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. 
They shall not follow a stranger, but they will run from him, because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my no own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In these 18 opening verses of John, uh, of John 10, Jesus uses an image or a series of images or pictures or what the writer John refers to as figures of speech or more literally allegory, paramoyen, in order to communicate something about the relationship between Jesus and us. Each of these images plays upon a very familiar image to Jesus' listeners, namely the relationship between sheep and a shepherd. The first image Jesus uses is a, sh a shepherd who calls a sheep to follow him. <laughs> Here's a little lamb who's just playing around next to me and keeps stealing my notes and doing other things. <laughs> hey, hey buddy. <laughs> no, she's a little yo. <laughs> but she's one of our house lambs, by the way. In the first image, Jesus is the shepherd who calls a sheep to follow him. It plays on the idea of this intimate sense of knowing when the shepherd of the sheep that would be familiar to the people of Palestine in Jesus' day. Sheep were given names and came to recognize the shepherd's call when they were led. Part of the lambing process for us is that lambs are penned with their mothers for the first few days to encourage the bonding process that is, that is brought about through taste and scent and sound. When they're put out with a larger flock, the lambs and mothers know each other intimately. The same is true of their relationship to the God, God lamas we have because they become part of the flock uh, just as we do. The lambs we bottle feed that we place on, uh, <laughs> that place attachment onto us and uh, if we were with them 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, then that attachment would be profoundly strong. And that's true of these little lambs here. We bottle fed them in the house for a while and now they're in the barn and they're very comfortable with us, they know us and they, they treat us like family. This first image carries it with it the connotation of discipleship, listening, relating, or being known, and following. Jesus sets himself up in contrast to the thief or the bandit who climbs over the wall, who is barred by the gatekeeper, and who is a stranger's voice that instills terror about the unknown. In contrast, Jesus is the one who enters through the gate with the gatekeeper's permission. He calls the sheep by name and they follow because they recognize the shepherd's voice. The second image that Jesus uses is that of a penning area where sheep were kept in Jesus' day. It would have been made out of a pile of stones um, clearly laid out um, in a giant circle or a set of sticks woven together that would have formed a sort of fence. It would have had a single opening to it and that uh, sheep would have entered into at night in order to be kept safe and they would have gone out of um, during the day. The shepherd would be the one who rested and slept in the doorway and would have literally functioned as the door, theria, or the gate, 
in some translations. And Jesus literally says, I am the sheep's door. While we like the idea of Jesus being the good shepherd, we hardly conceptualize of him as a door. But he actually refers to himself in that way in order to communicate to us that we pass through him to a place of safety. Whoever enters by me will be saved, says Jesus. And again, we have this contrast that's set up, and this time with thief of the bandits who come to steal and kill and destroy. The fear or danger from which Jesus rescues us. The word saved literally can be translated sothesetel, uh, and carries with it the idea of being rescued from danger, restored to wholeness, or made well, or preserved from danger. But the flip side of that is that Jesus is not only the door who rescues us from danger, but the door to rich pasture and life, and life abundantly. The third image we have is that one which we are so familiar with. Jesus is the Good Shepherd, I am the Good Shepherd, who lays down his life for the sheep. The contrast we have is with the hired hand, that while willing to look after the sheep while all is well, is more than willing to flee when danger appears because he doesn't care for the sheep. The contrast is there to tell us that Jesus, as the Good Shepherd, is not there for his own benefit and not motivated by greed, but rather is there for our benefit as the one who cares. It is in this use of the image that Jesus explains his own sacrificial giving, not as an appeasement of some vengeful God or Father or the payment or atonement for wrong, but rather as a sacrificial love of act of love that is freely given for the sake of those who are loved and those who are known. The image is woven into the idea of rescue from danger found in the first and the second image, but expanded out to explore the actual motivation of the shepherd who freely and willingly gives of himself in order to secure the rescue of the sheep. I pray God that as we journey into Palm Sunday and Holy Week, and on to Good Friday and Easter, that we will hear the call of the Good Shepherd to know the abundance of life offered within the security of God is God's embrace. As we reflect on Christ as both the door and the Good Shepherd, we might find comfort in being known, named, called, and restored to wholeness, and led out into the fullness of life. Amen. We affirm our faith together in Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. I'm being visited yet again by a set of lambs on the floor here around my feet. <laughs> For our intercessions and prayers, we use litany number eight. Let us pray. By your incarnation and your birth in poverty, by your baptism, your fasting, and your trials in the desert, O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. By your agony in the garden, by your cross and the passion, by your death and your burial, by your resurrection and your ascension, and by the gift of your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. In times of trouble and in times of well-being, at the hour we die and on the day of our, of our glory, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. And today we give particular thanks for the life of Grace, Mary Thompson's mother, who passed away over the weekend. We pray for, Mary, for Margaret and her family, that God would uh, give them comfort and grace at this time of mourning. We pray, deliver us from war and violence, from hardness of heart and from contempt of your love and promises. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those places in the world where there is war and violence. We think particularly of um, the refugees who are fleeing Myanmar at the moment and those in the horrific fire in the settlement of refugees from Myanmar.
we pray for those suffering the consequences of the flooding in uh, Australia at the moment as well. Enlighten our lives with your word, that in it we may find our way and our hope. O Lord, hear our prayer. Kiri Aleison. We pray for those who are known to us. We pray for those for whom we have a concern today. We pray for those who have requested our prayers and those that are on our parish prayer list. We pray for ourselves as we um, come to the end of the season of Lent, as we prepare ourselves for Holy Week. Assist your people in every land, govern them in peace and justice, defend them from their enemies. O Lord, hear our prayer. Kiri Aleison. We pray the collect. Most merciful God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you created humanity anew. May the power of his victorious cross transform those who turn in faith to him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Due to the increased um, infection rate at present, and the fact that we are now into potentially the third wave of this, uh, this, uh, this infection, we do pray that um, you would keep yourself safe and socially distance, and again, um, take every um, caution possible. Um, in light of that, we will be recording services right through from Palm Sunday right through to Easter Sunday in these next coming few days. And uh, they will all be online, um, and uh, we will not have um, in-church services at all. Uh, we just do not think it's wise at this point. On Palm Sunday, you can come by the church and pick up a palm cross if you so desire, and um, they will be made available between 10 on Sunday morning and 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Uh, literally is drive by, walk by, um, pick up a cross, and, uh, and uh, say hello sort of scenario. Um, if you wish to take advantage of that, um, then do come by on Sunday in order to do that. And during Holy Week, we will have services every day of the week, from literally from Palm Sunday right through to Easter Sunday, and they will be available online. And uh, do um, try and set some time this, this Holy Week uh, in order to participate in worship uh, with us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest with you now and forevermore. Amen. Come on, brother, you're chewing some bags. Right. I invite you just to join me quickly um, and we'll look at some, some new little lambs. Um, so these, uh, these three little bumpkins are here. Oh, this guy was born two weeks ago and he's getting pretty chunky now. Um, and he's a little bit on the heavier side. And it's just about feeding time, uh, bottle feeding time. So um, he's really bothering me. And uh, I've got somebody else chewing my notes and somebody in a camera bag. And uh, they're clearly having a lot of fun uh, this morning. I'm just going to introduce you uh, to Rosie and her two new, new little babies uh, that were born uh, two days ago. So that's Rosie there. And she's got one. Oh, there's the other one. He's hidden far away in the back corner there, trying to stay out of the way as best as he can. Um, from there, and then uh, there's 
There's Dolores and her little babies back there. There's one feeding now. Little tail is going back and forth. Um, oh, it's facing us now. Um, from there. There's a there's a new little lambies. This is Stormy. Hi, Stormy. And uh, Stormy has whoops, let's go down. Two little babies. There's one right there. And the other one is at the back end of her over there, facing the opposite direction from us. From there. Hey, Stormy. Um, and the camera's just being bumped by tons of lambs. That girl in the corner there, she had a set of twins and uh, lost them both. And she's just recuperating and recovering after that. Uh, not everybody survives, sorry to say, um, but nonetheless are well cared for um, by us. Yeah. And then there's three little lambs. If you can get them to stand still for five seconds, you may be able to see them. Nope, they're not going to stand still for that long. <laughs> but there they are, in all the things just being a nuisance.